scenes may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is recommended. Ang programang ito ay naglalabas ng sensitibong eksena at impormasyon. Striktong patnubay at gabay ng magulang ang kailangan. Magandang-magandang uh, tanghali po. Magandang-magandang tanghali. And of course, uh, tayo po ngayon ay uh, pansamantalang naging Monday agad for Kalinga sa OFWs. Dahil gusto natin ipahatid sa inyo, ihatid sa inyo ang mga kaganapang nangyari sa uh, Israel. At syempre, ang kakabi po ay uh, nakikisa at nakikisimpatiya sa uh, nangyari sa ating mga ka, mga kaibigan kakampi sa Israel. Ganun din naman po ang sa Palestina, 'di ba? Tayo po ay uh, sana kung walang gera, no, 'di ba? Kasi po sa gera, wala pong nananalo talaga diyan. Lahat po ay casualties, lahat po ay talo. So, sa ngalan po ng kalinga sa OFW, kami po dito sa kakampi ay nananalangin sa lahat ng mga tatamaan ng gerang ito sa Israel at sa, sa Hamas, mga taga-Hamas. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this day with hearts saddened with the news that we have seen on the TVs, in the newspapers about the attack on Israel by Hamas. Lord, we come before you as your children bringing to you the peace of Jerusalem, praying, Lord, for peace in that place right now. Because your word says in Psalms 122 verse 6, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Lord, we pray for Jerusalem. We pray for Israel. We pray for every single innocent person caught up in the war. Father, we pray for your protection around every woman, every child, every innocent man. Lord, those that have been taken captive that we have heard into Gaza, Father, we pray for a hedge of protection around them. We plead the precious blood of Jesus over them. God, we give them into your hands of grace. And we pray, Lord, that no harm would come to these innocent people, these innocent Israelis. And Father, we pray for the innocent Palestinians that are also caught up, God, in this terror. Father, we pray for the innocent Palestinian children in Gaza, where the bombing is happening, where the Israelis are striking back. Father, we pray that these children, women, men, God, that are innocent lives, that they would be protected. Father, send your angels to protect them. And I pray in all of this that people would have a revelation of Jesus. Those that are Israeli, those that are Palestinian, those that are of other faiths. Father, we pray that they would see Jesus. Jesus, you are the hope of all the world. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the only one who brings peace into our hearts and into our lives. So Father, we pray over Israel right now. We pray for a revelation of Jesus, that revival would take place in that nation, that they would see their Messiah. And I pray that this war would be over, Lord, that it would not escalate, that the other terrorist groups that have been predicted to join would not join Hezbollah. Lord, we pray against that in the name of Jesus. We pray that Israel would be able to fight back and overcome this attack. And Lord, we pray that there will be no more casualties in Jesus' name. Lord, we just give this whole situation into your hands of grace. And we pray for your angels, your mighty warring angels to go to work, fighting for the innocent, fighting for the Christians that are in Israel at this moment. Lord, fighting for Israel as a nation. So Lord Jesus, we commit this to you in your name. Amen.
And ito po yung mga nangyari nung nakaraang yung first day, no? Ayan, kinukundira natin ang lahat ng mga karahasan. Ano po, ba? Diba? So, dito po tayo sa atin sa Kalinga sa OFW. Pakinggan po natin ang mga update sa Israel. Um, I'm an international spokesperson for the IDF and um, my social media team say that we've been doing a lot of things on our traditional platforms, BBC, CNN. Um, but I want to reach out to our, our most important, important crowd, our followers on all social, social networks. networks. And I'm give you a, a, taking some time out of the day to talk casually and in a calm way what's going, going on. A very, very, very hard 24 hours. Uh, unprecedented events. We were attacked with a combined defensive uh, by Hamas yesterday, by surprise. And not only by the, the traditional rounds that we've had for years with Hamas. And again, again we've been talking about Hamas for years, who they really are. They want the annihilation, annihilation of our state. And I think everybody got a taste, taste um, of who they are yesterday. They attacked us in the ground, in the air, and also through the sea. And uh, they didn't go for military targets. They went for civilians. They went, went for grandmothers, children, babies. Um, this is event is still unfolding. The numbers are unprecedented. We are going to respond very, very severely to this. Um, in the upcoming days, it's going to be a long round. We are going to do whatever is needed. The style of attack is barbaric. I mean, the, the, the visuals are uh, ISO visuals. In a way, this is our 9-11. This is our 9-11, and we go even more than that. I mean, it wasn't crashing into a building. It's uh, also mutilating and attacking a party that was happening around the, the Gaza Strip, a nature party, uh, attacking civilians, kidnapping a grandmother. Um, a lot of my friends, a lot of our Everybody nearly in Israel is affected by this, by, by someone they know, missing people, soldiers that have been killed. There's, There's been real stories of heroes, heroes that engage with terrorists. And we're, we're going to respond very, very severely to this. Uh, this was against international law. This is against Islam, uh, hurting children I mean, in the children. children. I mean, it's just it's hard, hard to comprehend. I mean, it makes us all uh, sick. Uh, we're, we're also looking, looking at the north. There's been some un un unrest this morning in the north. Uh, I hope Hezbollah and the Iran don't do the mistake of uh, joining in. We're ready. Um, also in the north and also around Judea and Samaria. 
and uh, we're standing strong. strong. We're standing strong. strong. We'll overcome this. Um, I'm, I'm sure, sure you're seeing all the pictures. pictures. Uh, we, we had, had the dilemma, dilemma, by the way, to, to put these things, things out. out. We're, we're still thinking about it. Um, terrible, terrible pictures of a massacre. massacre. Killing. Killing. Um, we're, we're still, still thinking, thinking about it. Uh, we'd like maybe, maybe some of your response, response to see what we should come out with this stuff. stuff. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a it's a real dilemma. We should go out with that. that. That's, That's uh, more or less uh, a general update. Um, and I'll try and do this more again. Please help us. The only thing I can do and say to you all uh, are very important for us. Is please spread the word. Shalom everyone, Lieutenant Colonel in the Reserves, Jonathan here, and you are live on the IDF's official Facebook page. Uh, I want to give you a uh, special live update on the situation in Israel as we're speaking, and uh, try to keep you posted on what Israel is going through on this second day of uh, what is a uh, mind-boggling situation. Uh, for those of you who may not have heard and may not know, I'll give a short recap of how we got to where we are, and then I'll speak about what's going on now, and then I'll end by talking about what directives we have been given by the Israeli government and what uh, our plans are to execute. So how did we get where we are? Today there are confirmed more than 700 Israeli casualties. That is the highest number of Israelis killed in any day of anything, natural causes or enemy activity, since the State of Israel was founded. Let that sink in. And more than 2,100 Israelis have been wounded, which is also an, a, a, a fantastical figure that you, I, I, I struggle to wrap my head around um, and what is perhaps the worst thing of all is that most of those casualties were civilians we're not even talking about soldiers who died in battle but we're talking about civilians who were butchered on the streets and in their houses in their villages and in their beds and uh, right from the beginning uh, you know in the IDF we're we're hearing the outcry from Israeli society and from friends, um, Jewish friends from around the world and other people who care about Israel asking how did this happen? Um, how could Hamas perform this unprecedented act of violence and savagery? Those are tough questions and they will be answered by the IDF once the fighting is over and there will be time for reckoning but that will be done when the fighting is over. What we are doing now is focusing on the situation in southern Israel and uh, focusing on getting our job done. I haven't spoken about it, but it's probably the biggest topic. Uh, for the first time in our history, there are dozens. I cannot say the exact number, but there are very many Israelis held in captivity illegally, in complete violation of law, norms, basically a war crime. They're held by a terrorist organization in Gaza, and uh, these are women, children, infants, elderly, disabled people that have been taken from Israel into Gaza, paraded on the streets of Gaza, harassed, manhandled, and even executed um, and all of this documented in videos that Hamas members have proudly shared on social media. So that is the beginning of the situation for sure. The most difficult starting point that the IDF has ever faced in the beginning of a war. As we speak there is still fighting ongoing. There are still rockets fired at Israeli civilians and unfortunately there are casualties from these rockets and there are still Hamas terrorists in southern Israel 
IDF, the IDF Israeli troops are there fighting, searching for each and every terrorist in order to set or return stability and calm to southern Israel and uh, to be able to focus on the next stage of operations. I hope that in a few hours, as the sun will rise over Israel for a uh, third day after this heinous attack started, then we will be able to declare that southern Israel is clear of terrorists and we will move on to the next stage of our operation. Also, as we are speaking, Israel, the Israeli Air Force, is striking Hamas military targets inside the Gaza Strip. And tonight, we are striking many targets all over the Gaza Strip with the aim of sending a very clear message to Hamas that uh, will be felt clearly. Uh, there are lots, lots of infrastructure lots of military positions and many places that Hamas used in order to attack Israel from that have been struck and this is of course only the very first stage of the fighting. The Israeli government has ordered the IDF to be prepared or not to be prepared but to achieve a situation whereby Hamas will no longer have any military capacity to kill or hurt Israeli civilians. And second, to achieve a situation whereby Hamas cannot govern the Gaza Strip. Those are our aims. And we have mobilized more than 100,000 soldiers that are now in the south, getting geared up, ready, are preparing their plans, and they will execute this mission that has been uh, told by the Israeli government. We're in a, for a very long and difficult war. That is, this is not another operation, that is, this is not another round of fighting which starts with rocket fire and then Israeli retaliations and ends with some half-baked ceasefire and then happens again after a few months. This is a different situation altogether. Our, the attack that we sustained is unprecedented in scope and in severity and brutality, and our response will be unprecedented as well. And I want to say something about morals in warfare. Israel holds itself and is fights according to the law of armed conflict. We do this because we believe that we should use our weapons only in order to defend ourselves and to distinguish between anybody who is a fighter and who isn't a fighter. And yes, our blood is boiling, we are furious, angry, frustrated and many other things by these gruesome attacks done against our civilians, yet we remain committed to our moral principles. And we will make sure and we will make take all necessary steps to strike military targets and them only. But Hamas, at the end of this war, will not have military capabilities to hurt Israelis ever again. I hope that all of you around the world, as we're talking, I'm seeing your messages of support and love. And I can tell you it warms our hearts for all of the soldiers that will be watching this. And uh, voice your love and care for the State of Israel, for the IDF, and for the brave men and women in southern Israel who have been through mayhem. Uh, we, will, we are committed to fight, we are committed to defend the state of Israel, and we are confident that despite this incredibly difficult beginning of this war, we will prevail and we will send a resounding message to Hamas and any other terrorist, uh, not to understand very clearly that uh, this aggression is something that will be the undoing of Hamas. I hope that you'll stay informed. I hope that you'll keep connected with our uh, accounts and the information that we will be posting. My friends and colleagues at the Spokesperson Unit will continue to disseminate real, live and trustworthy information for you to be aware of. And um, 
when we'll be able to, you will also see live footage from southern Israel so that you'll be able to see exactly the situation on the ground. That will come as well. Until then, I wish you all the best and I will see you probably tomorrow. Shalom from Tel Aviv. Shalom. O, pakinggan naman natin itong sinasabi ng itong isa natin. Kayat ha-oyev, ze benigud ladin ha-benlewmi, ze benigud la-islam, ve-mi shelakach beka khelek, navoi to khashbon. Ha-milchama kasha, yesh od yamim kashim lefanenu, tsaal khazak, u-yafil et kol ha-koach va-otzma shelo. Ha-maase ha-nifsha shel Hamas, u-pesha milchama. Nashim ve-yeladim, ביד האויב, זה בניגוד לדין הבינלאומי, זה בניגוד לאסלאם, ומי שלקח בכך חלק, נבוא איתו חשבון. המלחמה קשה, יש עוד ימים קשים לפנינו, צה"ל חזק, הוא יפעיל את כל הכוח והעוצמה שלו. עיתונאי נגיירי ניון, 40 hours. Ayan po ang kaganapang nangyari nitong nakaraan sa, sa Israel. And I hope sana nga ay uh, hindi na tumagal dahil sa gera talo po ang lahat. So tingnan natin yung info, yung ano, info kung ilan talaga lahat, uh, RV. Kung ano, ilan yung mga naipaloob doon, ilan ang mga na captured ilan yung mga uh, brutally ill Okay. So tayo po sa kakampi ay naniniwalang ayaw na natin ang gera talaga. Ang gera ay walang patutunguhan. Ang gera ay walang humpay talaga na pagsisisi sa huli. Ayan. Sa operational recap, updated October 9, ngayon po yan, alas 12, Uh, 15 ng umaga 12.15 ng umaga iyan hostages held by Hamas in Gaza 700 plus Israeli is killed at 2,150 Israeli injured at 3,284 rocket fired from Gaza 650 din naman Hamas target struck Ayan po yung kabuuan ng nangyayari ngayon dyan. Okay. So, panawagan po natin at ulitin natin siguro ano, RB, yung ating uh, prayer para naman na uh, medyo sana nga po ay hindi na matuloy ang gantihan ng dalawang uh, bansa. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this day with hearts saddened oh, with the news that we have seen on the TVs, in the newspapers, about the attack on Israel by Hamas. Lord, we come before you as your children, bringing to you the peace of Jerusalem, praying, Lord, for peace in that place right now. 
because your word says in Psalms 122 verse 6, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Lord, we pray for Jerusalem. We pray for Israel. We pray for every single innocent person caught up in the war. Father, we pray for your protection around every woman, every child, every innocent man. Lord, those that have been taken captive that we have heard into Gaza, Father, we pray for a hedge of protection around them. We plead the precious blood of Jesus over them. God, we give them into your hands of grace. And we pray, Lord, that no harm would come to these innocent people, these innocent Israelis. And Father, we pray for the innocent Palestinians that are also caught up, God, in this terror. Father, we pray for the innocent Palestinian children in Gaza, where the bombing is happening, where the Israelis are striking back. Father, we pray that these children, women, men, God, that are innocent lives, that they would be protected. Father, send your angels to protect them. And I pray in all of this that people would have a revelation of Jesus, those that are Israeli, those that are Palestinian, those that are of other faiths. Father, we pray that they would see Jesus. Jesus, you are the hope of all the world. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the only one who brings peace into our hearts and into our lives. So Father, we pray over Israel right now. We pray for a revelation of Jesus, that revival would take place in that nation, that they would see their Messiah. And I pray that this war would be over, Lord, that it would not escalate, that the other terrorist groups that are being predicted to join would not join Hezbollah. Lord, we pray against that in the name of Jesus. We pray that Israel would be able to fight back and overcome this attack. And Lord, we pray that there will be no more casualties in Jesus' name. Lord, we just give this whole situation into your hands of grace. And we pray for your angels, your mighty warring angels to go to work, fighting for the innocent, fighting for the Christians that are in Israel at this moment. Lord, fighting for Israel as a nation. So Lord Jesus, we commit this to you in your name. Amen. So, with that, uh, padalangin po ng ating kakampi na matapos na po sana ng madalian ang nagtutunggali ang panik. Sa atin sa kakampi, paulit-ulit po nating binabanggit na wala pong panalo sa gerang ito. Muli po, kami po ay inyong likod. Fenny Kudemus, nagpapaalam po sa inyo sa, mula sa Kalinga sa OFW. Maraming maraming pong salamat. <music>